my name is Elise. I work in the admissions office. Um, and then we're here today with um, Alexis and Sophie. Sophie is a student. Um, if you both would like to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about um, your connections with Ross. Sure, should I start? Sure. Um, my name's Alexis Martino and I've been at Ross for 20 years and I'm Dean of Field Academy. Uh, and I teach photography and film. Hi, I'm Sophie. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Hi, I'm I'm Sophie. I'm in the, I'm from Germany, and I'm a boarder, and I'm in tenth grade. And um, I joined Ross in September, and I have really enjoyed it a lot. Did you say where you um, live? Yeah, Germany. Yeah, I said it. Very good. <laughs> All right, in that case, um, Alexis, do you wanna just give a quick overview of um, Field Academy and then we'll go through with some questions and then if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to continue to ask. Okay, so um, Field Academy is for three weeks every year and there's a multiple of choices. So you can choose to stay on campus or you can choose to travel. Um, we, when we first started Ross, it was very much about the curriculum and this is Ross you know, started the school as a traveling school um, when the girls, her daughter, and some other girls were only in sixth grade. So travel is an integral part of Ross, um, but also intensely learning about one subject. Um, so often we have about um, between seven and eight trips, and then seven or eight classes on campus that are offered. And it gives you three weeks to really dive into something intensely and learn about it. Mm -hmm. um, this year we had multiple trips, um, so we had one to Australia, we had one to Cuba, we had one to Cyprus, um, we also had one to, gosh, I forgot them all already, no, uh, Zimbabwe, and each trip has a different theme, so some are photography, some are community service, some are cultural, some are language, and then on campus we had, um, tennis with tennis pros every day. We also had a photography workshop where they got to show their work at a local museum, which was really interesting and work alongside famous artists. Um, we also had chess. If you were really into chess, you could play chess all day. There was an art one that was always very popular where you go in and out of the city and meet new artists. So. And these range in costs, as we were talking about in our last meeting, um, where I guess maybe you could go into it. It's a little cheaper when you stay on campus. Um, right, so we have some on-campus courses that were free. Um, and then the, the travel courses range anywhere between 4,800 this year to 6,000. For instance, Australia was expensive because it was so far away. Um, and some trips travel for the entire three weeks, which is 21 days, or some travel for a lesser amount of the time. Sophie, do you want to share your experience on your last Field Academy trip? Sure. So um, I was on the Cuba trip, and we were about, uh, we were 16 students and uh, three teachers. And um, yeah, we traveled um, over whole Cuba. We spent some time on the bus, and we basically studied the history and the econ econ economy, and just like, we also met like um, a lot of um citizens and we learned like we we got to learn how they live and just what's it what's it like to live in cuba and it was also a um, spanish immersion trip so we did a lot of spanish um my trip in cyprus was photography based and we had two famous journalists working with us one was ron habib and then michael the other one was michael chavez robinson who's a washington post photographer and then we had claire rosen working with us who is a conceptual photographer so we started our, off with carnival and we went in shooting carnival which was you know wild and fun and almost you know we joked it was like you know the closest thing we could get to a war zone with all the flares and the noise and stuff and then we moved into more conceptual work um the trip in australia they did community service and helped with the you know aftermath of the fires um we had zimbabwe which was also community service um so we had sort of a huge variety of different experiences on each trip mm -hmm. And can you tell a little bit more about um, 
what kind of work they'll be doing there as opposed to what kind of fun experiences, like that balance of work and uh, fun, I guess? Um, so, you know, I, I think taking pictures is really fun. So the fact that I make them shoot all day for 12 hours a day, it's all fun, right? <laughs> um, but it is, you know, I think the whole thing is fun because it's new and it's different. So I don't think you can sort of, you know, knock it down to, oh, this is fun time. This is work time just because it's all new and it's sort of, you know, engaging and interesting and Wow. Uh, do, I have a little film. Do you want to see a little film from Bali? I'll show you like, I don't know, a minute of it. So this trip was a couple of years ago and we went to Bali. And at the time we were super lucky because they had a, um, a huge amount of festivals going on. And so um, this is shot by one of my students and edited. He ended up at NYU um, and he was really into sort of travel photography and film. So did you share or should I share? Um, I think you can share, but I can get you out of it after. Okay, perfect. All right, do you guys see it? Not yet. Okay, share. Now? There we go, yes. Okay, so we, <laughs> all right, so let's see. Good. I won't make you go through all of it, but if you guys wanted to see more, it is um, on my Vimeo page, which is Alexis Martino Vimeo, and that you can hit a raw school and all the videos are coming up. Beautiful. So a lot of these students walk away from these trips with something physical, like a video or images. Um, what is the process afterwards of sharing those, maybe a display or... Is there anything? So um, usually what happens in this third term, a lot of the students who did photography or video might drop into an independent study or a class and then finish up all their work so that it has a, like a final product. And in a lot of cases, 11th graders might go ahead and use that for um, college applications. So they might say like, he was used that film, he ended up going to NYU, he got in, and that was one of the films he you know, in his application. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes we have alumni come back too that help us shoot some different things, but often the portfolios or any work or students also write about it in their college applications to really talk about an experience that's been out of the box. Yeah, which makes it sound like when students return from these trips, they've clearly grown, which is pretty cool. Um, what do you think is something that a lot of students say they take away from trips like this? Um, I think it's the experience of being with other students. I think it's a new adventure, a new way of looking at things, um, understanding a new uh, way of life with people. Sophie, maybe you want to talk to what you walked away with. Mm -hmm. sure. So, um, well, personally, from, from the Cuba trip, it was just impressive, like, because before we went to Cuba, we expected something, like, entirely different than what we saw. We thought it's going to be, like, a very low developed country country and a lot of poor people that don't have many opportunities but like it, when we were actually there there was just like so much stuff to learn that we had the chance to take away at the end and then of course it also, also like creates a community 
So I gained a lot of friends on that trip. And then of course I learned some Spanish as well. And yeah, I think just in general, like being on like a trip with like school for like two weeks, we were there for two weeks. It just like changes you and just like helps you also in the future to like be more open for other stuff. Yeah. Now the notebook you had to write in, was that something every student did or did you choose to do that? Um, so in Cuba, we got these notebooks and um, every student, that was like kind of the thing that we had to do, like instead of photography, we got a notebook and every day we had to write about a page about like, just like um, responding to some prompts that the teachers gave us. We j didn't have to like write, oh, today we went there and there we had to like really like reflect um, about what we saw um, at that day. And we also did a little bit of Spanish exercise in here. And, but basically it was just like something that we wanted to do to like, to like have something after a trip that we can like review and look back to. So it was like more like something that we were willing to do instead of like essays and work. <laughs> okay. um, we have a question to the group here. It says, what are some possible trips for next year? So when will students learn about those? Um, so we'll, during August, we do a retreat, all the faculty, and at that point we'll brainstorm different ideas and we'll go, okay, where's safe to travel? Where isn't safe to travel? Um, you know, we always start thinking. I know people have thought of a couple of different ideas, maybe a road trip in the United States, maybe the Philippines, um, another African country for Haley. But of course we don't know because of everything that's happening with coronavirus. So um i guess we'll probably not make a ton of plans until august so then we can say okay well this is a great place to go it's super safe and mm -hmm. etc perfect um one student asked also um i would like to hear more about the trips focused on helping the community like the one to zimbabwe so okay so in zimbabwe um it was community service so they did community service for about uh 14 days of it um and they worked with an organization called hoops for hope um and so they worked with the, the kids they built and painted murals they hung out with them they raised money particularly they worked in the orphanages um they do a really really great job and that trip goes every second year and then Haley will do another trip in between that and she often works with hoops for hope or um or another organization mm -hmm. Um, Sophie, you were talking about um, how a sense of community comes out of this. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about like how many people go on these trips, who's going on these trips, chaperones, um, a little bit on that? Um, sure. So Cuba was one of the trips that had like the um, least participants. So we were um, 16 students and three teachers. And um, we had two Spanish um, speaking teachers and then um, one of our, like, our, like, kind of leader teacher, I guess, was a math teacher, so, um, and then students were from, uh, we had students from, from all grades in high school, from ninth to twelfth, and, um, but, like, it really didn't matter which grade you were, because on the trip, we're, I don't know, like, it was never really, like, a topic, like, grade stuff, like, we were just, like, together there as a group, and I, th I think that was also like really nice because you got to like hang out with people that you normally maybe wouldn't hang out with. So that was like a change too. And I really enjoyed that too, to like learn, like get to know more students and yeah. Definitely, definitely. It's a whole no another experience all around. Um, another question here, it says, how much does the Zimbabwe trip cost and who is Haley? <laughs> Um, Haley London runs the Zimbabwe trip and she's been at Ross for about the same amount of time as I have, maybe, maybe a couple years less. Um, and this year, I believe it was 52 or 5300. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but you could, if you were interested in learning more about that, we could definitely put you in touch with Haley. Um, and they have some videos and they have great, you know, pictures from their trip as well. Yeah, a lot of them on Instagram too. Um, if you go to the Ross School page and then on the bar, it's our tagged photos. You should be able to find some. I can't remember the name of the hashtag. That's the only reason why I say that, but that could be. Um, what was, was it? The hashtag? Yeah. Ross on the road. Mm -hmm. 2020. Yeah, something like that. 
Um, can you guys talk a little bit more about um, where you're kind of staying when you're abroad? Are you in one location? Are you traveling? What that's kind of like? So for our trip, um, because we are intensely trying to build these portfolios, we don't travel as much. Um, we used to do trips in Namibia where you traveled every second day or Kenya. But um, as we've gone forward, we try and go to one or two locations. So for our Cyprus trip, we were on one part of the island for part of it, and then we moved to Pathos for part of it. And then our final port or final stop was um, Austria, which we skipped just because of the virus. Um, and last year we went to two places. We went to Cartagena and Cusco. Um, and the year before Bali, we stayed in a couple locations in Bali, but again, trying to really absorb one area so that we could really tell a story. On the, the Cuba trip, we stayed uh, the first four days in Havana. And then after that, we never stayed longer than two days in the same location. And we, um, we had a bus and then every uh, morning we would get on the bus and then we would drive up to Sometimes once we drove, I think seven hours, but that was just like to return to Havana. Um, and then we would have like the entire rest of the day and maybe the day after to like explore the region. And I think in total, we visited about seven cities, I think. And we also did a little bit of hiking in the Sierra Maestra, um, just like for like kind of a change from the cities and all the traveling, to like be in nature a little bit more. Yeah. Was there any prep um, leading up to your trip, Sophie? Um, yeah, so uh, once a week before a trip, we would meet doing advisory for like um, a little bit of time to, first of all, um, review Spanish a little bit to prepare for the trip and just like learn some like helpful terms for like the airport or something. And then we would um, learn about Cuban history. We did some um, presentations, each student would talk um, about something that I wanted to share about Cuba, and we watched it. And uh, we watched the documentation Cuba Libre, and yeah, we also had a meeting with um, the organization that we're in Cuba with, and they explained to us a little bit how we should like act in Cuba because it is, of course, a um, and completely different area than like the United States. Yeah, definitely. Um, Alexis, can you talk more about what other prep trips may look like? It sounds like um, community service trips may have more of a process in the weeks leading up. They do. So they look to raise money. Um, they might also look to, I don't know, order basketballs or um, get tennis shoes from the local community. So they're looking to sort of get things organized before they go. Um, a lot of people try and get people to realize what's gonna, what they'll experience once they're on the ground. For a creative trip like mine, it's like brainstorming what you're gonna shoot, what's your story, what are you gonna do, what props do we need? Because we brought in so many props with us so we didn't have to buy them in country. And so each tri trip is different. If it's a language trip, they're gonna want you to learn language. We have approximately, um, I would say five sessions before the trip during the year and then a teacher might also do an afternoon prep or a Saturday prep just to really get organized. Mm -hmm. um, I remember last session we had a student ask are there any trips in the U.S.? Can someone talk a little more on that? Sure so we've done about four or five trips in the United States. Um, one of our first trips was called Road Rules and it was um, we did New Orleans and the Panhandle and at this point, it was in 2001 or 2002, so we rented RVs, and it was quite an adventure. Uh, the teachers drove the RVs, and we explored the entire area. Um, our last huge uh, United States trip was Fire and Ice, and we went from Alaska, where we uh, learned how to um, snow, shoe ski, and then we also um, did dog sledding um, and really looked at Denali National Park and the environment. From there, we moved on to um, the Central Valley and looked at water issues. From there, we went to Tijuana and then Oaxaca. Um, and so we went, you know, right across the uh, seaboard to really understand the diversity. Cool. 
Um, Sophie, can you talk a little bit about the process of choosing a field academy trip and any advice on how you should kind of narrow it down? Mm -hmm. So first of all, um, we had like a, like they announced a field academy trips. We kind of already knew a little bit before which, uh, which were trips and then they, um, during town meeting, like this is like a meeting with the whole school, every trip had like a table and they um, talked about the trip and then we could kind of like walk around and find out what they're gonna do. And then um, um, we had a couple of days to like think which were like our favorite trips, which we wanted to like attend. And what was important for me is that like I choose a trip that's just like has something that like I've never like experienced before. Um, so I was interested in the, of course, the Cuba trip, also the Zimbabwe trip, and then the Argentina Patagonia trip. And um, for the Cuba and Zimbabwe trip, I couldn't really decide because I thought that both were great. So um, I just rolled the dice and then was the Zimbabwe trip as my first choice and then the Cuba and then the Argentina one. And I got into the Cuba one at first, and a couple of days later, I got offered um, a spot in a Zimbabwe one. But at the end, I decided for the Cuba one just because I, well, I've been to Africa um, before, and I've never really experienced a country like Cuba. And also, I want to like learn more Spanish. And I think one thing that's like really important, but some students don't like they don't think about it is that many, uh, many, many of my friends, for example, followed their friends to the trips just because they wanted to like go together. But at the end, like, it wasn't really something that like they wanted to do, for example. So I think it's just like, to like get the most out of the trip, it's just important what you want and not what others want. I think that's an excellent response. Um, we do have another question. It says, what about people who stay on campus? So on campus, we have a variety of um, different classes. So this year we offered eight. So we had intense tennis, where you got to play tennis all day and learn from the pros. We had a chess class, we had a systems class. Um, there was also a art class where you got to go to New York City every day um, and do art and work on your portfolio for college, if that's something you're interested in. We also did a photography one where they learned alternative processes, where they got to put photographs onto metal and wood. And then they did, it's called a sit-in, where they went to Southampton Art Center and got to exhibit their work with lots of other famous artists and got to experience the sort of whole gallery. And in that sit-in, the other artists were also working at the, um, at the museum doing their own work. So it was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so it's still just as hands-on, um, but just a different approach. And it's kind of cool because it does get you off campus, which is nice, um, very cool. So we have a question for Sophie. It says, what drew you to Ross School? Well, um, I looked at a couple of schools, but like the, the thing that really like stood out from Ross was like, first of all, the, um, like the electives and like how many like different electives there were. And then of course the field academy program, it was just like such a new thing to me to like go with the school for three weeks to like travel such a long distance. And then also um, my father wanted me to do surfing, which I also did at Ross. And yes, yeah, so at the end I chose Ross. First of all, I met, I talked to um, some people also to some students and I don't know, I just like got the kind of feeling that I would really enjoy it there. And yeah, at the end it was just kind of also the electives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's asking, how do you do surfing at Ross? Um, so we, um, there are a couple of athletic teams that you can join and there's also surfing and sailing. And um, so basically you, you get like um, a wetsuit from, um, from the school and then after at, at like three at 3 p.m you change and then at 3 10 you leave uh, and travel in like one of the yellow school buses to the beach which is about a 10 minute drive and then we meet there some instructors from our local um, surf school i think it's about sometimes five teachers and then we also have um, two teachers from ross going with us 
and yeah then we serve around one and a half hours and then we return to Ross and day students can go home and the boarders eat there and then return it to their boarding houses. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, back on the topic of uh, Field Academy, well actually how are, you, how are you teaching photography at home? I think this one's a good for Miss Martina. <laughs> <laughs> um, well I started off with giving some assignments and what I realized is that it's so important not to have the written feedback because I don't know, kids are teenagers, right? So they need to hear you and see you. So I've started where I've been critiquing every single student at least once a week. So I have their assignments, then they FaceTime me or Zoom me or Microsoft team me, and then we talk about all the work. And then from there, we make the next decision on what they're gonna shoot. So it really hones in their own personal desires versus, you know, in a classroom, you can teach and everyone can get excited about one assignment because then everyone sees everyone's assignment. But because you're limited in seeing what's happening, I think it's not as exciting. So that's how we're doing it. Um, and then I've started a blog where I'm gonna share all the best work on a weekly basis. So people can go, oh, look at that, and maybe be a little inspired. Um, and I'm going to use this week to make some fun videos um, about shooting and stuff. Yeah, definitely. If you yeah. want to share that with me, I would love to put it on the Ross School Instagram because that okay. would be cool to see, I think. All right. It's not done yet, but I'm working on it. Yeah. And then we'll finish our website from Cypress so hopefully soon. I'm a little bit slower. I, I'm, we moved to Squarespace, so I haven't got it yet. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Sophie, have you taken a photography class just out of curiosity? Um, well, I have not. We, we did a little bit of photography in uh, media, mm -hmm. which is a core class that I had with Miss Martino um, in fall for one trimester. Um, but I actually wanted to join photography in spring, but at the end it didn't work out with my schedule. So, mm -hmm. yeah. There's always next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. These are really good questions, you guys. Does anyone have any other questions about Field Academy or anything along those lines? Or even, I guess, Ross School, happy to answer. Uh, let me see. Okay. Um, I think while we wait for a second, just maybe in case people want to think, Sophie, do you want to see, say uh, maybe your favorite thing about Ross or something different about Ross? Sure, so um, one of the things that I like noticed and right at the beginning when I joined Ross in September is that like people are really like open to new students because I guess there are a lot of new students new students each year so they were like really outgoing and wanted to like get to know you and like also teachers like the student teacher relationship is like really different from my old school they like really encourage you to like I don't know like explore more and just like work hard also which like no, it doesn't like it sounds bad like work hard but it's also it's it's really a lot of fun mm -hmm. and then like another thing that I really like about Ross is just like the like incredible incredible range of like things that you can like explore for example you like you don't have to do like try out new things because there's like always something like that fits for each student but like for example for me personal personally it was just like fun to like try out new things and like get new passions definitely i think that's should be the goal for most high school students right you're kind of building this foundation for yourself trying to figure out your passions so you know which direction you maybe want to push forward into as you graduate um so i think that's really insightful so i thank you for sharing that um, so it looks like we have no other questions. Um, I hope everyone got out of this meeting what they were expecting to get out of it. If you have any other questions, you can always um, email admissions at ross.org kind of as the like a first forefront to get you in touch with anyone you're looking to get in touch with. Um, but I think there's one more question. What is the question? Did you get it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says, what is your least favorite thing about Ross? <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to answer. I'm, I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> let me, let me think of it. Or maybe what is one thing you would change it looks like? Um, I think like one thing maybe like, I, I like what I've experienced so far 
is at the beginning of the year, it was sometimes a little bit difficult to like gain more friends from, for example, from like day students, but then like, I don't know, like two weeks in, you notice that they, that they're they also like want to become your friends but i don't know at the beginning it was just like kind of like a tiny barrier but it's just really important that that you like talk to them and like see and like find out that they actually also want to talk to you but i think that's the only thing right now that i can think about mm -hmm. yeah yeah that makes sense okay very cool Alexis, do you want to say anything that you want, like a reflection on Ross? No, no, I've been there a long time. I like it. It's a little like the Hotel California, you know, you're there. I can't know. Um, I enjoy Ross. I love what we do. Um, and sure. I like all the travel. Especially. Yeah, the travel and the opportunities, like even students, if they want to take a class that is not offered, sometimes, correct me if I'm wrong, they can um, confront a teacher and propose a class, right? Absolutely. If you have an independent study or something you want to pursue um, and we're able to help you, we're completely open to that idea. Definitely. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, um, Alexis and Sophie. I think it was really great to hear from you both um, with great information. So um, hopefully everyone heard everything they wanted to hear. And if not, let me know, but have a good day. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.